Hey friends, Blaine at Applied Leadership Partners. Uh, welcome back to the whiteboard. Today, I wanna to talk to you about exceptions. And specifically, I wanna to talk to you about your role as a leader as it pertains to dealing with exceptions, dealing with things that were not part of the playbook, that weren't in the brochure, that you didn't account for in your plan, something has gone outside the normal bounds of what you thought was gonna happen within your organization or within your business, and now you've gotta deal with it. And I think, for me at least, and, and hopefully you'll agree, dealing with exceptions is maybe the most important thing you do as a leader. So in addition to kind of setting up and building the system and designing it and putting it in place, which is absolutely a leadership task, the next thing you have to do is deal with the system or deal with circumstances when the machine or the system isn't working. You know, management is making sure that your people and your machine are kind of functioning as they should under normal circumstances, you know, with things happening generally as we had, we planned or predicted. But once you've helped to design or build or put in place the system in the machine, this is where you earn your money as a leader because anybody can just sort of sit beside the machine and make sure that it's kind of working on time, the KPIs are coming through okay, everything's checking out. What happens when something breaks? What happens when there's a novel problem that shows up? Someone's gonna have to think through it, make a decision and deal with it, and that's your job as a leader. So let's first address maybe a couple of pitfalls that I think people run into as it pertains to dealing with exceptions. The first one I like to call the precedent trap or the false precedent trap. And what this looks like or sounds like in the real world is, well, if I let him do this, then I'm gonna have to let everybody do it. Or if I make this exception now, then when this comes up in the future, I'm always gonna have to make this exception. Uh, and I'm here to tell you that's not true. This is what leadership is about. You've gotta look at the scenario based on its own merit. Make the best possible decision you can at the time you've gotta make it with the resources and the information you have. And then be prepared if you need to, to proactively explain your thought process and your thinking and how you came up with this decision. You know, you may even have to kind of defend this decision to the board or to your boss or to your, your team, but that's why you're there. You have to be willing to do that and, and say, hey, I've made this decision. It's a bit of an exception. By the way, this doesn't change the rule or the policy. That's what makes it an exception. And we're gonna do this and we're gonna go forward. And you don't have to feel like, well, if I do this one time, then I've gotta do it every time. I think that's false precedent and it's a trap you can fall into that will kind of arrest your decision-making process and won't allow you to make the best possible decision at the time you've gotta make it. The other one I think that's a bit of a pitfall is we think sometimes that we can contingency plan our way out of these ahead of time which I think contingency planning is a great thing. We certainly did it a ton in the special operations community, but you're never gonna be able to kind of checklist or flow chart your way through every possible scenario or every eventuality that's gonna take place out there. So by all means, do some contingency planning. Think about, here's our base plan. Um, if this goes wrong, we'll try to do this. If that goes wrong, we'll try to do that. That's great, but understand you're never gonna be able to account for everything and so don't fall into that trap, don't think you can. Understand that you're still going to have to make exceptions and make deviations and do that. Um, again, that's really your role as a leader. Um, what this really comes down to is what, you know, our, our mentor Bob McDonald would say is values-based leadership versus rules-based leadership. And it's not only important for you as the leader to be able to do these kinds of things, but ultimately you wanna do it enough and embed it in your culture enough to where your people believe they can do the same. So look, if you come up against something that's novel or new or different or falls outside protocol, I wanna empower you to make a decision based on the values of the organization rather than feel like you're constrained to only operating within the rules of the organization. So if you got an angry customer, by all means, let your customer service people do things for them to resolve situations within reason, give them some, some guidelines, um, but empower them to do that if something crazy comes up so they can take care of that kind of earn a customer for life and keep things moving versus saying like, I'm sorry, I'd really love to help you, but that's not within our policy. You, you guys have all been on that end of it and you know that's not a good long-term strategy. So again, just another little nugget. We hope you find it useful. Again, your role as a leader is really to make uh, decisions and to manage the exceptions that come up within your, within your business and within your organization. And I'll just kind of leave you with this. If you are unwilling or unable to appropriately make exceptions, then by definition, you're forfeiting your right to be exceptional.